Hey everybody, this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Today we're going to be talking about chickens and how our chickens are doing in our little homestead. The chickens are right here behind me. This is their little area that we keep them in uh, during the summer. Uh, and when there's not snow, we let them free range. But in the winter time and things, we keep them enclosed in here. They wouldn't go out anyways because they don't like being on the snow. And so we keep them here in this coop and run, and we let them run about in here. So we're going to go in and see how things are going for them today. So these are most of our chickens. We still have others that are hiding, so to speak. They're starting to come out because they're wondering what's going on. This guy is our main rooster. That is red. And then over here, that guy back there, right there, that is Henry. That is red's son. And we also have Skidmark. Let's see if he's in the coop still. Hi Patsy Patsy. So let's see if Skidmark is in here. There is Skidmark right there. Skiddy. Uh, he's called Skidmark because uh, when he first started getting feathers and you can kind of see it right there. Uh, when he first started getting his feathers in, he looked like he had been run over, that he had skid marks across his body. And like I said, you can see the, the dark coloration right there. So that's how he got his name. And at first we thought he was quite the large hen because he didn't get his iridescent feathers until, until quite later. But uh, he turned out definitely to be a rooster so we have three roosters and approximately 43 hens we have aracanas and amber lynx and we got barred rocks these are uh, light brahmas rhode island red isa browns uh, the, these are the Plymouth Blue Rocks, otherwise known as Sapphire Gems. Those guys are Amber Lynx. And that's everybody. So, that's Fatsy Patsy. She's one of the largest of the buff Orphe tents, and you can definitely tell when she's She's around because she's one of our fattest birds. This here is uh, Brownie. She's one of our oldest birds. Her and her sister Buffy. And then the Brahmas are also one of our older hens. But the rest of these guys are last year's last year's flock. Oh, I forgot. This guy here, gal, sorry. She's a prairie bluebell. We have a couple of those. The prairie bluebells kind of look like a, a wine dot, but they're not. They are a blue egg lane bird. So we got a couple of those to go with the aracanas. And then we got the uh, sapphire gems because they're uh, really interesting colored birds. They are the same family as the barred rocks, just a different colored variety. So yeah, so and our our roosters are all aracanas. So as you can see, we got quite a few aracanas that are this color. That over there, you can see she's kind of a uh, different color. But aracanas come in all sorts of colors. They're like a Heinz 57 variety as far as a color palette. So we have, if I named them all correctly, I'm hoping I did. We have quite the mix. And we are deciding whether or not we want to go with all aracanas this coming year because we rotate our chickens out 
once they're over the age of about three, the uh, egg to feed ratio is uh, uh, starting to uh, really be off balance. They don't lay as many eggs. So for egg layers at about three is when you want to start rotating your birds out for some fresher birds. If you were going to eat these birds, then that would be a, a good time to uh, to dispatch them for food. But we don't eat our birds. We use them strictly for for eggs and for making compost. So um, you can see that uh, Skid Mark's tail is looking pretty good. He's looking pretty good. Um, Red's starting to molt, so he's losing some back tail feathers. And then Henry over here. Henry used to be uh, second in command underneath his father. He was like the prince of the flock. But he has uh, lost his status quite a bit. You can see he's only got two feathers left. And uh, yeah, uh, Skidmark has kind of moved up in the ladder of the pecking order of the chickens here. But um, overall, this is a quite docile group. Uh, some of our uh, bluebells, or not bluebells, uh, the blue Plymouth rocks or the sapphire gems, however you want to call them, we notice they can get broody and they can get really nasty. The same with the barred rocks. Both the rocks uh, tend to get really nasty when they get broody. So we try to not let them get broody. Um, but uh, it is what it is. But other than that, they're, they're quite docile birds. So what we think we're going to do, because again, we we're thinking about doing um, just uh, getting rid of everybody except for the Aracanas and just having Aracanas, blue eggers, um, is we're probably just going to do a barnyard mix. We're just going to probably hatch, start hatching our own eggs. That kind of gives us a good genetic pool of all the different breeds we have represented here. Uh, because all these are winter hardy, docile, good egg laying breeds. We'll eventually most likely end up with olive eggers because we have the blue uh, blue egging breeds, the aracanas, as roosters. And then we have uh, uh, brown egg laying birds like the buff orphington and the isa browns and uh, some of the other birds. They'll make olive eggers. You can see the chickens are very, very happy. We just put down some hay. Uh, so they have something to walk on besides the snow and the hay also has the uh, the grass seed and stuff in it. You can see this this gal, she's in rough shape. She's in molt right now. Uh, but she'll get better and she'll start looking like the other ones eventually. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the hay works very well and also to give them something else to do I like to kind of just take some of their uh, grain and just toss it in the into the hay here so they have another reason to scratch and peck and just do what chickens do even though the ground itself is frozen and there's about four inches of snow right here so yeah and see right here how this rooster is going to lose some feathers because we have a bluebell pecking at them um, but that's just the way it goes um, if we start having problems with like this one here constantly being a feather eater, she will be removed from the flock because that's not a behavior you want to encourage. Um, the birds need their feathers. So any feather eating bird is removed from the flock. <clears throat> that's Lucille. And uh, she's one of our first hybrids. When she was first hatched and got her feathers, she looked like it was two different breeds smushed together. Lucille is the cross between an Isa Brown and an Aracana. So she had the um, the brown, or the reddish brown up front, which you can see very well, and then the back was more of a cream color, um, kind of like our amber lynx, uh, very creamy color. But she's starting to even out a little bit more. She looks more like a complete Isa Brown with an Aracana face. But uh, yeah, she is um, Red's daughter. So yeah, she is our only hybrid in here. The rest are all pure reeds. I love chickens. They're so awesome. 
So that is our chicken journey update. Um, we usually get new chickens every year um, around February or March. And then we will put the uh, chicks in this coop behind us um, when they start getting feathers and they can tolerate the cooler temperatures. And then we let them grow up in the brooding um, uh, area so the other chickens get used to them and then we let them out. Um, but again, this year, we're thinking about hatching our own chicks, and uh, so we'll see how that goes. Um, this is our thought process. We're trying to be more self-sufficient, and by hatching your own chickens, you're definitely more self-sufficient. You're not going to the store to buy chicks. And uh, we know that uh, the odds of getting hens, it's about a 50-50 chance on getting uh, hens when you hatch your own whereas you usually can buy a, uh, a batch of pullets or something like that from um, the store uh, we figure if we get more roosters uh, we'll just sell them to those who need roosters or who eat um, chickens and uh, they'll take care of that um, and that's the side of the farming that we don't like. We don't like that, you know, males really aren't necessary for um, having livestock, at least not as much as females are. It only takes one male to fertilize quite a few females. Um, but that's just the way that it is. And uh, so you do what you have to do in order to maintain the purity of the flock, to maintain the health and things. And for livestock, that means you have to get rid of the extra males. You can't have them around. And so, again, we try to rehome them to places that can use them. But with roosters, it's very difficult to do because everybody has roosters. So we'll just uh, cross that bridge when we get to it, and we'll go from there. But uh, we'll keep you updated as we get ready to cross that bridge and let you guys know which way we decide to go whether we're going to get an uh, incubator and hatch our own eggs and start making a Heinz 57 bird um, that encompasses all the different varieties we have here, or if we decide to go down to just um, raising purebred aracanas. Um, we're not sure yet, but we will keep you updated. I thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope this video was kind of interesting to watch. Please give it a thumbs up, let others know about it so they can have as much fun as you did watching it. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel so you can keep updated on the journey here at my homestead. I hope wherever you are that you are wonderfully blessed. Bye bye!